nets are an important gear used by scientists to collect information about fish living in shallow nearshore waters. They're designed to be pulled over a substrate and brought to shore where organisms can be identified, counted, and either released or retained for further biological sampling. Marine biologists with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission primarily deploy two net sizes, the 70-foot net and the 600-foot net. The 70-foot seine collects small species like anchovy, silverside, and pinfish, along with the juvenile phase of many of Florida's most popular game fish. The 600-foot seine is used to capture species that are three inches and longer found in the nearshore habitats. Marine biologists have spent many hours in the field honing the skills needed to effectively and efficiently deploy and retrieve these nets. Since a field trip is usually the first experience most of your students will have using a seine net, it is highly recommended that you use smaller nets in the field. 10 or 20 foot nets work well. Additionally, you might want your students to practice using a net before going into the field. This can be done on the school grounds and will only take a few minutes for each student to learn the basics. You want your students to use a pulling technique that keeps the lead line in contact with the bottom. Let's take a minute to look at a typical seine net. It is a rectangular panel of nylon woven with quarter inch mesh. It is either four or six feet high with a surface area of less than 500 square feet. The weighted line or lead line is for the bottom and the float line is for the surface. Each of these lines is attached to poles to make it easier to pull the net through the water. There are several vendors selling quality seine nets and all of them will help you select a net for your activities. When your net arrives, it usually comes rolled and packed in a bag. Before unrolling it, you should select and prepare the poles. Four foot shovel handles purchased at any home hardware supply store works well. Simply drill two holes in each pole Pull the lead line through one hole and the float line through the other. Tie each line so that the mesh is close to the pole. Repeat the procedure on the second pole. Cut off any excess line and seal the frayed end with either super glue or a heat source. Since only two people at a time can pull the net, the remaining students can be given other tasks. A complete net team might include the pullers, collectors, counters, and a data recorder. The collectors would identify each specimen and select those that are going to be kept for further study. The counters would be responsible for keeping track of the number of each specimen captured in each pull. And the data recorder would maintain a log sheet. A team might also include students assigned to collect water quality data. The deployment retrieval method you choose may vary according to the site and conditions. One method is to simply pull the net parallel to the shoreline for a predetermined time or distance. You might select this method if the water depth drops too quickly, or if the wind is blowing parallel to the shore, or if there are rocks or other obstacles close to the shoreline. Another method involves pulling the net from a selected distance offshore to the shoreline. If this method is used, the puller should walk in single file to the location where the collection pull is to begin. The third method involves pulling from the shoreline to a designated distance offshore, then looping back to the shoreline. In all three deployment methods, it is important that no one walk in front of the net while the net is being pulled. To do so would scare fish that might otherwise be netted. Retrieving the sample is the next task. Two primary methods are often used. Many like to use the cradle method. 
This creates a dip in the net, which can remain in the water, thus allowing anything captured to stay in the water while the collectors and counters are performing their tasks. The second method is easier to use, but also creates the greatest stress on the fish. It involves pulling the net onto shore. Your teams have to work quickly to call and count so that the fish will be out of the water only for a minimum amount of time. Another drawback to this method is that students often step on the net, which can either damage the net or kill something that may have been stepped on. Once the collector's encounters have completed their tasks, the net needs to be prepared for the next pull. If the cradle method was used, simply flip the net over and dip it into the water. If your team used the shoreline method, grab the float line and pull the net into the water. Then step over the lead line and then pull the float line towards shore, which results in the net being cleaned. If the collector selected some things for further study, special care should be undertaken to maintain those organisms. A good five gallon bucket works well as a holding device. Students who do not want to get wet can monitor these containers. They will be responsible for changing water and making sure that there are not too many fish in any one bucket. Once you've practiced these skills with your students and each student can perform one or more of the assigned tasks, you're ready for the field trip. As part of your site selection, be aware of the bottom type where the nets will be pulled. A bottom type like this, with either obstructions or clumps of oysters, is both dangerous for your students and will result in damage to your nets. Another bottom type, the hard bottom, is not a good selection either. Nets pulled across this habitat will destroy bottom growth, pulling up large sponges and ripping soft coral away from its foundation. Grass flats, beaches, and even some mud bottoms are habitats where pulling seine nets causes the least problems. When the field work is complete, the nets need to be clean and rolled for transportation. Dump the net in the water, pull it out and shake it. Flip it over and repeat the process. Then fold the net in half and roll it around both poles. Upon arrival back at school, each net should be draped over a line or some other object that keeps the lead line off the ground and washed off with fresh water. Once dried, roll each one up and store it in a dry, clean place until the next time you need to take them into the field.